Today we're going to have a look at some advanced spreadsheet functions. Um, we're going to be looking particularly for the grade 12 CAP syllabus. And um, in this lesson, we're going to look at the nested if and the V lookup. So let's start with the nested if. Over here, we've got a question. We want to determine the status of a UFO sighting based on the number of sightings. If it's, there's, for example, three, so that falls between the 0 to 5 category, so therefore the status is small. Anything from 6 to 24 is medium, and 25 and above is large. So there are three possibilities. If there were only two possibilities, that would be a simple if statement. Because there are three possibilities, it's a nested if. The other reason why it's a nested if is because they've said there, add a nested if statement. So that's also a big clue. So let's have a look. I'm going to say equals if. Now, the condition, the logical test. It is very easy for me to do a logical test for naught to 5 because it's just less than 5, less than equal to 5. I can, it's very easy for me to do a test for 25 and above because it's greater than or equal to 25. It's very difficult, though, to do the 6 to 24. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if it's small, and then I'll display small. If it's not small, then I'll check if it's a large. And if it's not large, then the only other possibility is that it's a medium. That way, I don't need to check for the 6 to 24. I just have to check less than or equal to 5 or greater than or equal to 25. So let's have a look. We're looking at the number of sightings. So I'm looking at which cell, C2, and that must be less than or equal to 5. If that is true, it falls in the small status. So I put, a, put the word small there. Remembering, whenever you're displaying something directly, you must put it in double quotes. Okay, so if this is true, it will do this. If it is false, it will do the second part, or the third part, sorry, the third parameter. But this is also, this is two options. It's either medium or large. So this is why I start a second if statement here for these two cases. And as I said before, I don't want to look for 6 to 24 because that's quite a difficult condition to write, um, to write out. I'm going to look at 25 and above because that is simply the number of sightings, which, which cell are we looking for the data? That one again, and that must be greater than or equal to 25. You put a comma down, so we can start writing what must happen if it's true. Well, if it's greater than 25, we must say large. So double quote, large, double quote, and I put a comma now so that I can write what must happen if this condition is false. Well, if it's false, then we must display medium. The reason for that is because if it's not small, it will come over here to this if statement. And if it's not small, the only possibility is that it's either large or medium. So I'm not finished yet. I must close my brackets over there. That You see a little red there and red there. That's the, the inside if statements brackets. Now I want the main if statements ending bracket there. So I'll put two closing brackets at the end. Okay, let's see if it works. There we go. Works fantastically. Now, another way you can do it, I'm just going to delete the first one. Another way you can do it, you can choose which way you prefer, is to use the auto sum over here. I'm going to come over here, go more functions. Now I'm going to go to the all option over there and go to if. Let's go down to if. Oh, let's go quicker. We'll go past it. There's the if statement. So I click if. And the logical test, just like we did before, number of sightings must be less than or equal to 5. What must it say? It must say small. If it's false, now it's probably a bit easier to see it out this way. You can write that if statement quite clearly over here. It's a lot easier to see then. Well, if the number of sightings is greater than or equal to 25, then we display the word large. And if it's not, we display the word medium. Double quote. There you go. Sometimes it's easier to see it this way. Just always remember, if you're displaying something directly, like small and that, you must put in the double quotes, okay? And also you put commas between your three parameters in an if statement. Remember, the first one is the condition or the logical test. Then it's what it must do if that logical test is true and what it must do if that logical test is false. Oh, there's an error. Why did I make a mistake there? Ah. I'll put an equal to sign there. I'm going to just take it away, and it works. Okay, don't put equal to signs in the middle 
of your um, equation or your formula. You just need the one at the beginning. That's all you need. Okay, done. So let's do the V lookup. The second question is a V lookup, or as I like to call it, a flookup, only because it sounds cooler. Um, we've got classification, and the classification needs to be uh, is determined on a table in the table tab. I don't know if you can see it behind this um, logo over here, but there's a table tab if I click on it. So it looks at the number of observers. If it's anything between 0 and 10, not including 10, it'll be negligible. Um, 10 to 25 is minor. You see, this is going to be very difficult to do with nested ifs because it's going to require a lot of ifs because there are five possibilities. And because it's in a table format, it's probably best to use a VLOOKUP, um, which stands for vertical lookup. And they've also said use a suitable lookup function. That's also a big clue. So a VLOOKUP, we only really need to give it three things. So I'm going to say equals VLOOKUP. The first thing is the lookup value. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the number of observers. If I had to do this using paper, I would first look at that number and then look it up in the table. So it's what am I looking at first? I'm looking at that number. That's what I want to check in the table. That is what the lookup value is. The second thing is the table array. Which is wh where is this table data that we're going to look this number in? So I go to the table worksheet and I select the table array. So I just select the tables data. If you notice, I did not select the headings. Do not select the headings. And always make sure that the thing that you're looking up, we were looking up the number of observers, uh, that will be in the far left column. So there's the first column, the very first column, the far left column. That is number of observers, which is correct. I'm looking for the number of observers. So that must always be on your left. And that's the only bit of the table. So once I've done the table, there's a big uh, another tip. You need whenever you do your VLOOKUP, is probably about 99.9% .9 you need to use dollar signs to make sure that when you copy the formula down, it copies correctly and that this table doesn't start moving down. Okay, so that's why it's a good idea to put dollar signs. So remember to put your dollar signs around the A2 and the B6 all around the table part, the the cells. Make sure you put the dollar signs around there. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, I don't know why it's jumped to this page. I'm going to put a comma because I'm finished with the table. And now I'm going to go back to the table over here. I'm going to delete that just because it's not supposed to be there. Okay. So just double check. We've got what we're looking for. This is where the table is that we must look for that value in. The second thing is the column index. Okay, so what is not the title of the column, but what is the column index number? So in other words, this column over here in my table is, t is column 1. This is column 2. If I had other columns, this would be column 3, column 4, and so on. So where do we want to get the information that we want to display? Well, we want to display the classification, which happens to be in the second column. So the only thing you have to do is write a 2. You don't need to stress about the range lookup. We'll do other examples with that later. But for now, that's all you need. You can actually just leave the range lookup out. And there's your VLOOKUP. What you're looking for, then you go co comma, then the table. Where is the data that you're looking up? Okay, we're looking in this table. Remember to put the dollar signs. And then put a comma, the number of the column that you want the answer to come from. So if this is column 1, this would be column 2, and so on. I press enter. There we go. So I looked up number two. It went to the table. Well, two is between 0 and 10, so it must be negligible. And the rest of them should work correctly as well. Okay. I hope that has been useful. Remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.